and we'll move to the next module that is active devices, micro devices, semiconductor devices. So circulator, it's a passive device. Okay. And this also is non-reciprocal in nature. Now, uh, how does it work actually? It is non-reciprocal, okay, but how does it work? So for that, uh, we need to take the help of two devices, which we have already discussed. So if you are asked to draw the, means if you, if you are going to talk about the recirculator in general, then it's a four port device, okay, it's, it is shown like this. So the property of this device is such that if you are giving input to one of the ports, so the flow of the signal will be in one particular direction. So here, if I consider that the flow of the signal will be what? in anti-clockwise direction. So if the input is given here, then the output will be available here. Whereas there won't be any output at the other two ports. So at this port and this port, there won't be any output. Okay. Now if I change the input, location of the input, so if I Apply the input here. So as I said that it is designed in such a way that the flow of the signal will be in anti-clockwise direction. So the output will be available here and there won't be any output here and here. Okay, so uh, what will be the, uh, the applied port? The output will be in, uh, in the adjacent port but in anti-clockwise direction. This is how uh, the circulator works. That's why the name is what circulator. Okay, or you can think about what the flow of signal in clockwise direction. Okay, so if you are applying something uh, at this end, then the output will be available here. If you apply something here, then the output will be available here. If you're feeding something here, then the output will be available here. So you can uh, reference direction which the flow of power is going to take place. Okay, let's see now how does it work. So for this, I said that we have to take the help of two devices because this was just the symbolic representation how the circular is going to behave. Okay, for that we have used this symbol. Now uh, the actual, there are different uh, this kind of circulators. It can be in printed form or it can be in non-printed. So we are going to see the non-printed one. So I will take one, this magic T here like this. So you have to remember the property of the magic T. That we know. So the property of the magic is what? You apply anything at E arm. This is E arm and Z arm. So if you're applying anything to E arm, the output will be available here and here, this two port. And the output available will be out of this. And if suppose you're applying something here, then the output will be once again at these two ports only. That is here and here. But the output will be both in phase. Okay, so this you have to keep in mind. Now I will use one more E plenty here. Okay, now we have a connection between the two magic. So this port is connected to this port. Okay, 
and this port of course will be connected to the other collinear port of the other magic tea but through gyrator so here we are having a gyrator okay so gyrator is what it's a non reciprocal device and it provides 180 degree phase shift but in a particular direction only because it is non reciprocal in nature so that phase shift is going to occur in this direction it means if any signal is traveling from this end to this end then only the phase shift is going to take place but if the travel is in opposite direction that is if anything is any signal is entering from the right hand side and moving towards the left hand side then there won't be any change in the phase okay so let's see uh, how uh, whether uh, we get uh, a unique flow uh, of what uh, the propagation of the signal so let us consider that if i apply something at this port so i will treat this port as what h uh, h port as what port number one so what will happen that the output will be divided in two parts one will be available here so i will name this port as port number uh, sorry i will call this as port a and this as port b so we'll have two signals at port a and port b so one will be available here another will be available here both are vertically upward so here i want to say that both the signals they are in phase okay now they will travel and will appear here and here there is the two calling reports of the second magic key so once again the report because there is no phase change of any of the signal okay because the gyrator is going to provide phase shift but from left to right not from right to left okay so both the signals they will be in phase and will be available at the collinear ports of the second magic key now uh, this port and this port both are going to behave like what uh, uh, these two ports they are receiving two signals they are acting as what input ports so two signals in phase both in magnitude same magnitude so the signals will get added will appear here so output will be available here so we'll call this as what port number two okay now we'll treat this port number two as what in port so what happened once again you will get output here and here both are going to be what in phase because now you are you have applied signal at h um, that is port number two okay so this two in phase signal having same magnitude they are going to travel like this okay and here it will travel like this and both are now available at what the two calling ports of the front magic t but the now this time there will be change in the phase why because the signal which is available at the left port and which is coming from the gyrator, gyrator is what non reciprocal device so this time this gyrator is going to change the phase of the signal so one signal which will be available at collinear port will be vertically downward and the other one it will remain unchanged so i will show it with the vertical arrow so now the two signals at collinear ports of the front magic t both are out of phase so these two ports now they are acting as an input port out of phase signal so some of the signal will take place and that will be appearing at e arm so i will call this as output port so i will output will be available here now, port number three will be treated as input port and we are going to feed the two signal we will feed a signal which will be available at a and b port now since we have used e arm to feed the signal the signal will split in two parts and will be available at port a port b but both are out of phase okay now these two signals when they are propagating and reaching to the second magic t so this time there will be change in the phase of the change in the phase of the signal because the gyrator is non reciprocal in nature so two signals which are going to appear at the second magic t one will be what vertically downward and another will be vertically upward okay now two signals out of phase so the cancellation of that signal will take place at port number two and both since they are out of phase will get added and appear at e arm of the second magic key so i will call this port as port number four so output will be available here 
okay now if you are applying anything to this fourth port that is here input then the two signals will be appearing at collinear ports will be out of phase so you can consider this as one output signal and this is the other uh, signal now both the signals when they are reaching here at the phone in the ports of the first magic key so phase change of left signal is going to take place and it will become what vertically upward here and the other signal there won't be any change in the phase will be appearing here now two signals at collinear ports both are in same phase so cancellation is going to take place in e arm and sum is going to take place in h arm so output will be available here so now you can see that the sequence is completed so if you're applying anything to h arm of the front magic t the output will be available to the second h arm of the second magic t and if you're feeding anything to the h arm of the second magic t that is the back magic t then the output will be available at the e arm of the front. if you're applying anything to the e arm of the front magic t then the output will be available at the e arm of the back magic t so this is e to e flow will be there and h to h flow will be there and this sequence is not going to break okay so this is how the circulator works now uh, what can be the possible application because without any application none of the devices will be uh, certain okay so let's see what how we can we use it so let us consider that this is the circular magic key here 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 okay this can be a good candidate for measuring the reflection coefficient of any device and with the help of reflection coefficient we can find out the impedance of that device because reflection coefficient is what zl minus z naught divided by zl plus z naught okay so let us consider that this port is ground uh, it's mass terminated like ground uh, this port is match terminated we are not going to use this port okay so z naught i will call this load as what z naught so z naught means what it is equals to the characteristic impedance of that particular port okay i'm applying something some signal here at one of the arms and this circulator the flow of signal will be in anti clockwise direction here i have a load okay its impedance is not known to me so what is going to happen now so if you are applying any signal so you know that the applied signal it will flow and will reach to the second port okay so if if suppose the load is what this is the load that is perfectly matched with the characteristic impedance of this port suppose here so there wouldn't be any reflection from the signal and the output so if there is no signal no uh, mismatch is there then there won't be no reflection and you know, if the reflection is not taking place then there won't be any output at any other port everything will be absorbed suppose you are having a measuring device here okay it's a measuring instrument so what what is going to happen that this measuring instrument will show you zero reading confirming that there is no output so it means what the reflection coefficient is what zero so reflection coefficient is zero it means that the zl and z not both are same okay now let us consider that the zl is not equals to z not then what is going to happen so definitely if you apply any signal then that signal will be uh, i will name this port okay port number 1 then this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 fourth one is mass terminated so if you are applying anything to port number 1 then the signal will reach to port number 2 okay port number 2 and if any mismatch is there, which is there 
because the ZA is not equal to Z0. So what will happen that the signal will get reflected from the low and that reflected signal will behave like input signal to the port number two, okay? So it means that you have fed something to that, sig uh, to that port. That something, the magnitude of the something that depends on the mismatch. If larger mismatch is there, then the reflector signal will be more. If the less mismatch is there, less signal will be there. Okay, this signal will act as an input signal and the flow will be going once again in anticlockwise direction. So that signal, it will be collected at port number three. So here this meter, it will tell you, okay, this much signal is there. So what you can do now, you can find out reflected, uh, sorry, reflection, which is what? We reflect it made by what? Incident, I will try it here, reflected. So reflected signal will be measured from the uh, meter and the input signal will be given, will be uh, measured at what input port. So now you are knowing the input signal and reflected signal. So you can find out reflection coefficient. And with the help of reflection coefficient, you can find out the lower impedance, okay? So this is how this circulator can be used for impedance matching. Okay, now, if you have any doubt, you can ask, um, because this is the end of your the third module. Now we can, we can move to the next module, that is fourth one. So it's uh, semiconductor devices. So half of the semiconductor devices you are already aware with, and half they are new to. Is there any doubt? <laughs> 